ladies of el salón the chronicles oye ladies of el salón the chronicles escucha ladies of el salón. dímelo linda and we're back hey guys welcome back to an episode of el salón chronicles hola <laughs> Of course, a motorcycle. <laughs> I, I'm telling you guys, the universe knows. It knows. It's. I have to make amends with it, and maybe one day I will. I'm their joke. Everything was fine until I started talking. Right. Okay. Just want to point that out. Just want to point that out. All right. Dímelo, Linda, and we're back. Welcome, guys, to another episode of El Salon Chronicles. Hi, I'm Suli. I'm Mari. Liz is not with us today, but we do have an amazing guest. We have Coach Lex. Coach Lex, Hello. you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be, you know, a part of, you know, your, your podcast. I really appreciate and it. I was excited to, you know, for when you guys invited me um, here. I am a strength and conditioning coach and performance specialist. Um, I work with um, an array of elite athletes and a lot of people, you know, in the general population um, community as well. Nice. Nice. And you're okay. also a little personal trainer. We, we, tra we <laughs> yes, train I with am. you. We train with you twice a week. Listen, yes. you described us. You described her as our little personal trainer. She is not. She is well, our horrible, miserable, mean <laughs> trainer. We can't walk. La I am not. <laughs> Every time we can, we can't walk. We can We walk away like baby giraffes. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Her her famous so, words. I'm. A, we're almost done. Yeah, we're almost oh, done. Yes, yes. We're, those are her famous <laughs> words. Done. We're almost done. And then she kills us. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, one more. How many more? You said we were almost done. Just you can do it. She takes a sip of water. You can do it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, you can do it. You got this. La mata. <laughs> but we love you. We love you. We love you for, for trying to fix this we have going on this this i don't know if this is covid i don't know what 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 is this that we have this fatness that we have going on but whatever <laughs> it is what it is beautiful well we're in good hands we are we're in good hands so um lex um you know we wanted to jump right in and talk about you since we have you for the next you know 45 minutes so can you tell us um like, what does it mean to be a strength training coach, a conditioning coach? And, and like, take us through, like, your journey and getting there. Like, how did you decide to do that? I didn't even know that that was a thing. Absolutely. Go ahead. You know, it's definitely a thing. It's become more popular now um, as we, as the women begin to, like, just break these barriers, right? Because it's such a male-dominated realm. It's so... Mm -hmm. It's, it's very few of us, you know what I mean, in this field. Um, right. I am a strength and conditioning coach, which means that now I, it's, it's more specific. It's more goal, it, you know, oriented towards athleticism versus of, you know, a personal trainer, which now, you know, you're working more with the general population client. You have to basically create um, a program that's applicable to the day-to-day -day life of just a general sedentary person. Right. It's those things are very, very, very different in that in that sense. Um, I am a performance specialist. So then I, you know, create and design programs and get my athletes to the next level where it's now performance based, which is speed, you know, multidirectional movement, how they're able to to, you know, perform better on the field or on the court, whether it's a, a, an NFL athlete or a basketball athlete. Um, and my journey it was a journey. It definitely was a journey. It wasn't something that was easy. Pardon my dog. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's okay. I had to isolate him and put him all the way towards the back. So he's trying to get out. <laughs> no, don't worry. My dogs are in their crates right now. And I'm dog sitting a chihuahua, but I'm surprised she's laying right here quietly. So I, I oh. mute my mic every time because I'm afraid every time she looks at me. But go ahead. <laughs> but um, it was a journey. It was something that I began as um, a personal trainer at a boutique gym. 
it was something that was very small, just beginning, you know what I mean? Something that I really wanted to be, you know, get acquainted in, right? Just, I was an athlete already. So I ran track, I was a cornerback, I played cornerback on an all-male team. And it was something that I was, I was passionate about movement and I've always been passionate about, you know, how do we can get better? Not just only as an athlete, but as a human being, right? Just performance, just in general. Performance means, you know, once you wake up, how do you function on a day-to-day basis, right? And that is, I, I, that is what drew me in. Um, and I always say an athlete is just a human being with specific skills that they're great at, right? Those skills are much more enhanced. Um, and you can be a triathlete, right? An athlete, you know, a gamer athlete, you know what I mean? And things like that. That's why they have esports and et cetera. But I was passionate about that. And then I was amazed at what movement does to the body, right? What nutrition does to the body once you start making those lifestyle changes. It's more behavioral more than anything else. And I always say working from in out, right? When you, when you guys met me, it's about how we can work from in out, right? And, and just creating, uh, making small changes and creating better habits because it's, it's about falling in love with movement. Versus of just creating it like, you know, forcing it like, oh, goodness, now I have to do this today. I don't want it. I don't like it. Right. It's basically falling in love with that, um, whether you're a regular person. Right. Or just an or, or an elite athlete. Right. It's it, at the same at the end of the day, we have one goal and that's to get better. Right. To be healthier, thinking about longevity. And that is always my goal. And then not only just preparing the athlete for now. But longevity after football, after basketball, you know what I mean? Just creating that. But it was, um, like I said, it was a journey. I had a great mentor and he guided me. He always pushed me to, all right, Lex, this is what we're going to do now. You're good here. Now we got to get you here. How can we prepare you for that? And I always said, but this is, I'm a one woman. I'm one woman in a team of 30 men. Like, how am I going to get, it's, it was such a, 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 a competition even them with each other. And I used to see it and I was just like, you know, I don't even know how I'm going to get past this, you know, barrier. Then I became, you know, an assistant fitness manager, then became a fitness manager and then left that company and then became an executive director, regional manager and so forth like that in performance, you know, and then I got hired. Then he pushed me um, again to, um, to apply for, you know, one of the most elite performance companies that are out there. I applied for that. I got the job. Now, it wasn't something that was easy because I was interviewed five times for this position. Um, right. Like I said, I changed my name on the application twice. I submitted it twice. I submitted it with my full name, and then I submitted it with, you know, changing the, changing my name. Hmm. I got called. Yo, can you explain detail that? Yeah, explain that because we thought that was really interesting how you yes. weaseled yourself That's, into an interview. I weaseled my way into that. <laughs> So I changed my name. Um, It went from Alexandra, right? Feminine. You know, immediately you can say, okay, she's a woman. Um, To Alex, right? And I kept it short. So then that way you, and then immediately I got a call. Immediately they, you know, emailed me for an interview. And it wasn't even a phone interview. So it was the the other one was like, okay, we're going to have a conversation. And immediately was just like, okay, we're not going to proceed because, we're gonna we're, we're taking the next steps to you know with the next person that we found but then I reapplied for it and immediately I got a call hmm. so I said oh they're you know they're really looking uh-huh. for a man for this position like they're just not uh-huh. opening it up to everybody so that kind of just like set a fuel you know what I mean I fueled me up just a little bit more I was just like you know what no I'm gonna try you know and do this because now this this bothered me this much I'm gonna get it like, you can't challenge me because I'm going to go for it regardless. Um, I did that, and then I arrived to the location uh, for the interview. As soon as I arrived, they thought that I was replacing somebody for facilities cleaning. God, are you serious? Yes. I'm very wait, wait, wait. So, wait, how, how was, wait, someone actually because my asked hair, you? Yes, they were like, okay, so you're here to replace. I can't, I can't remember the person's name for facilities. You can go to the back. You can change things are there. And this is the list of what the things that you have to do. And I said, no. And then I went in just like you, Madi, with the curls. Cause my, at that time I had a big, 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 you know, thing of curls and my hair was longer at that time. And I was just like, no, I'm here for the interview for the performance specialist position, the strength and conditioning coach. 
And immediately she was like, oh, this is a front desk. Okay, I, 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 you know, I'm, you know, just sit over here. And then she went to the back, you know, did her little whispers. And then some people came to the front just to see. And then they went to the back again. I immediately knew there was some type of commotion because they couldn't, you know, really figure out why I was there. I arrived, right. there were about like four guys, four white men, bald, with a polo collar shirt and khaki pants. I said, this is very typical in this room. <laughs> this is very typical. It's just like, yeah, you know, and let me just, and they just kept on staring at each other and just, you know, doing these little eye things going back and forth. And then it became it, it, like, it just, it turned into a space of bragging, right? Oh yeah, well, you know, I, I did this and I did that. What are you here for? An interview, bro. <laughs> oh, for the same position? <laughs> I believe so. I think we're all here for the same thing. So, oh, yeah. the the, wow. you, the the guys with the polo shirts were there to interview as well. Yes. Yes. Oh, so they were the other. Oh, okay. They were. Okay, yeah, okay, they okay. were the other guys. They just they weren't. Were ex they 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 weren't expecting they weren't the girl expecting. from the Bronx. <laughs> they weren't expecting the girl from the Bronx. Absolutely not. They were not. Wow. I promise you. But um, it was. Then they became. You know, they just started bragging. Oh, I did this. I did that. And look what look what I did here and I got this and this certification here and then I have this license here and then this degree here and I was just like okay this is just this is really getting on my nerve I got up probably like twice to go get water because my mouth was, was you know dry I was just a tad bit nervous of like what to expect but excited at the same time then I go into the interview and they're just like it went from the two people that were interviewing the the remaining of the they take me for last they saved me mm. for last. They didn't know Even what to do with time, you. They didn't know what to do with me. Mm. Even though my time was before all of them. So they saved me for last. And the two people that were interviewing everybody else, it became a table of five interviewees. And then me on the opposite end. I guess they were Ooh, just Oh, so I hate those panel interviews. I really disliked it. They wanted to make me feel uncomfortable to intimidate me. That's what it was. Right. Mm. They wanted to intimidate me. They wanted to make me feel uncomfortable, but... What they, they, what they didn't know was that actually excites me. Mm. That actually puts me in a, in a space where it's like, oh, they trying me right now. They mm. I got you. I got you, <laughs> all of you. So, you know, and then they were just like, you know, we're going to switch this up a little bit. We have some questions for you. They slid a piece of paper. And I was just like, what is this? Like, I thought I wasn't in an exam room for like anatomy and physiology. I was just like, this ain't even right. This is not part of nothing. And then the questions began, and I was just answering everything. Boom, 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 going in. Then they invited me. You were well prepared. Back. Right. I was well prepared. I was beyond well prepared. They just didn't expect wow. all of that to come mm -hmm. from this. Mm -hmm. that's, what it, mm -hmm. that's what it was. And I went back again. Um, they were just like, okay, so now you're going to meet some board members. You're going to meet this. And then I was like, okay, whatever. I hopped on, you know, the, the long travel, two and a half hours to get there. And then... Like nothing, you know, went with my little coffees. I was drinking coffee at that time. I was just like, all right, boom. And I was like, what is this? Like, I feel like I'm entering a conference meeting that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and then long story short, in the fifth meeting, at the fifth interview, the fifth meeting, it's just, it's like, well, you know, I thought five that I was not going to get it. Right, five. Mm. I thought that I wasn't going to get it. You know what I mean? I, it was a good investment traveling because it was an experience. It's something that I can talk about today and how I can prepare women like myself to walk into these spaces, right? And just, you know, hit the ball out the park mm -hmm. and just basically surprise everybody. Um, don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. Mm -hmm. These are just people just like mm -hmm. you and me. And some of them will create these questions and don't even know the answers to it. They just want to see how you respond. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. Because half mm -hmm. of these people in there don't even know, it, probably like three out of, two out of five of the people that were there knew about, you know, one was a strength coach, another one was a performance specialist, a, a physical therapist, and the other two was just HR, finance, mm -hmm. regional manager. That's it. They really just, they're just there to listen and to be nosy because we didn't even need all that, mm -hmm. you know, all those people. But then they offered me the position and they're like, well, you know, um, so we want to give you the start date. Um, how will that work for you? Oh, I'll take it. They didn't think that I was going to go with it right away. They were like, don't you have to give your job a two weeks no notice? And I said, absolutely. I'm going to give the job in a two weeks notice. They were like, but this day, and I said, no, I'm giving, I'm letting you know that I'm starting in two weeks as well. So that, that works for me, but you got to change the state. If you want I me here that, that, if you want me here that bad, mm. 
I was just like, because you guys interviewed me five times. And I said it, I was just like, you know, and then the, a woman, one of the women that were there, she was just like, I have a question. Your hair, is that how you work? And I said, yes, I do identify with my hair. I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reject the position. I said, because right now you're judging me by the way. I'm like, no, 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 that's not what happened. That's not what it is. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Oh. First of all, I, I'm surprised that they that she even brought that up. She I don't think that, that you can. She was just like, no, I, I, I was just so amazed. And, you know, it's, it's very nice. Like she tried to switch it up right away. And I was just like, uh -huh. honey, we know it's not that. We know it's not that. Yeah. And then she tried to catch me again while I was walking out. And then she tapped me. And I'm big on like, don't. You're in my space. Mm -hmm. I'm walking out now. Mm -hmm. Don't touch right. me. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know what I mean? So it was, um, it was that. And she was like, I, I really want to apologize and welcome again to the team. And then when mm -hmm. they sent me the offer letter and all that stuff, they sent me a, all, additional things to try to make me, like to try to for, help me forget about what they said. Like, you're going to mm -hmm. get this, you're going to get that. Um, we're going to, you know, compensate you for your travels. We're going to do this. We're going to send you to this training. What do you feel about that? And we're going to, I was just like, oh, this is a nice little package. I'll take it. They for screwed now. up. They know they screwed right. up because they didn't check their biases. And so it came, it came out right. when they weren't expecting right, right. it. That was a big Absolutely. mess up. That probably got you so much more than what they were probably thinking you were. Right. right. Absolutely. So that was right. your advantage. Yeah, because what does your hair, yeah, what does exactly. hair have to do with your performance and how you are going to, you know, be a coach right, right. And, and do your work? Your hair has nothing Absolutely. to do with that. Yeah, and then oh, she tried to say, you um, know, we want to make sure that it goes well with the uniform. And then she was just talking about things like that. Oh, I was just like, it. she was just way off. Right. I'm That's sorry, because, because ball head, had, come on now. So yeah, exactly. ball head goes with anything? Get the fuck out of here. I mean. So, so wait, so now let me ask you, does... You're obviously a beautiful Latina, Afro-Latina. Do you identify as an Afro-Latina? Yes, I do. I identify as an Afro-Latina. Uh, so uh, you're a beautiful Afro-Latina, and you're in a field where it is predominantly male. There's a lot of testosterone. Does your look, your appearance, your physique, uh, I mean, I hope I don't offend you when I say you're a very shapely Latina, like we all are. So, and no matter how baggy you do, mm -hmm. how does the way you look affect your ability to do your work and to be respected? Absolutely. That at the beginning was a big issue. Doesn't matter how much, you know what I mean? I cover up or if I put my jacket around my waist or, you know, I, I went as even as plain as possible, a bun, glasses, or sometimes just a headband. That became an issue where it's like, okay, you know, um, I let me just put it this way: I attracted a lot of athletes and a lot of people, you know, from an array of different communities, right? Different communities because of the work that I do. Because of the work that I do, I immediately set a boundary and I immediately I immediately present myself with respect. So then that way, everything else is blinded out, right? It's blocked out. Um, and that's how I basically gain them, right? And we, they earn the trust based on my experience, who I am and the work that I do. And then later on, you know what I mean? If they need my qualifications or credentials just for verification, then I provide that too along the way. Um, but, I, but if you don't know me and you see me from afar, that's the first thing you're gonna say, oh, they're training with her because of her looks. Oh, she's connecting with them because of her looks and all this other stuff. And she's laughing and she has a smile and then she has a body and she has this. And immediately I get asked, like, oh, so what is it that you're doing so these athletes can work with you? Right. And then that that's and, and those are the people that are that they and, and believe it or not, these are the people that work with me and that are a little bit in the higher up realm. Right. Or people that I've collaborated with before. For example, and I speak about, and I and, and I become more open with the situation. There was a woman, a white woman. There is a white woman that became very obsessed with my physique, with who I am, and you know what I mean. And it just started to, oh, but why is she working with these athletes? They no longer want to work with me. Why did? Why she has this job? Why did she get this position? How she knows this person? And she started to become very intrusive, and I started to distance myself from her even more, and more, and more. you had a workplace Karen 
Yeah, I had a workplace Karen. Man, she's like, I don't even know what type of Karen she is. She's Karen times 12. Oh like, my. it's just, yeah. It's like, you know, Kevin's, it, no, not Kevin, Karen to like the third power. And you know, that number is, is, is huge. Mm. And it was just like, then she started to compare herself with me. Oh, but you did this one. I did this too this time. Oh, but I took this test three times and you only took it once. I sure the hell did. You know why? Because I have something to look forward for. Everything that I invest in, I work my behind off because I got two human beings that I got to raise. Two human beings that I got to raise. And I promise you that everything that I do is for them. I want to show them that I'm still working hard toward things. I'm not cheating my way in nothing. And right. God gave me a brain for a reason. And I have great mentors. I see great tutors. I still to today, things that I don't know, I still ask questions. I go back to the basics and refresh my knowledge constantly. If there's something that I don't know and it's out of my realm, I refer out because that's not my job. I'm not going to sit here and try to pretend like I know to try to keep you. Right, you create a nice network of collab, uh, you know, of collaborations, and then you just build a great reputation with other people. And that's how I've also gained my clientele. I refer her out; they refer towards me, and that's it. But uh, yeah, this woman, she was very, um, very intrusive, very disrespectful. Um, that it became to the point that she started accusing me of, you know, sleeping with people, and then she oh started God. tagging me on on things on social media and saying, "Don't work with this person. She's a fraud." She's this. She's only using her looks to sleep with people. So and she was trying to slut shame you on, on She was definitely, social no, media. she definitely slut shamed me on social Isn't media. Isn't that defamation yeah. of character? That is definitely defamation of character. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, so, then, what, um, so what happened with that? Like, did so she, she get reprimanded or? She didn't get reprimanded because she became, she's her own entity. So she doesn't oh. work with anybody. She's just a con, like they contract her, they pay her as an external contractor. Um, and she has her own, her own company. Um, and she started, you know, tagging these people from like the, some people from the league, some athletes, even their wives. And my inbox, when I tell you from my DMs to my text messages to my phone was just insane. It was me, insane. I lost, yeah. Let me just specify. When you say athletes, what kind of athletes do you mean? Like what football. athletes do you so want? NFL, with? yeah, from the NFL, NFL athletes, mm -hmm. some were in some are in the NBA. Um, but her her, you know, she's mainly more towards the NFL athletes. And she got there. I I now I don't know how she got there because she did like bodybuilding, but um at the end of the day, it was just like I res I respect her for her work. I respect her for her work. Now, aside of putting character to the side, she's extremely smart, like inc extremely incredibly smart at what she does. I'm not going to take that away from her. Um, and uh, you go to her, she'll definitely help you out with whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that you need. But her character, it's right. so ugly that that just turned me off with connecting with, you know, with anything or even referring people to her to uh, to her. Um, but yeah, she definitely did that. And that so what was the result me. of that? Like slut the, shaming yeah. you? I deleted my, my old Instagram. I deleted my own, my old Instagram completely deleted. I was off the gram and social media for about eight months. I changed and that's, my phone And that's number. important to someone like you, right? Because that's that how you generate. very important. That's how I generated mm -hmm. my business. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I had a very good following. I had to, you know, um, get back out there all over again and re-earn my following based on you know my work and the things that i that i did i lost why were um, people believing contracts. her people people believe people believe what's on the ground versus of what you are because then they and if they don't know you they're gonna believe what she says right she has right. A, a very 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 large following like it's up in the right. thousands and um, this was right before, um, right, and this happened, like, right, she took advantage of right when COVID began, March of last year, because people were shut down, they were indoors, and they had nothing but to be on their phones. So she right. took advantage of that. And then when everything started to come about, and she started posting me and saying these things about me, and then obviously I deleted my, my old gram, 
But other people that I know follow her, once a lot of the, the issues of like Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and a lot of things started coming up with like, you know, people of color, she stopped. She stopped mm. and she knew better to stop because some people started sending her messages like, this is a, a black woman. This is a woman of color that you right. are criticizing. You got to be mm. careful what you do and what you say. So she immediately stopped and then she ended up blocking that person. Um, she didn't even were respond. There any, read it. Were there any re repercussions to her? Like, did she get? There weren't. She she really? lost. A, she lost collaborations on her side on on her end. And people now for this year's like NFL Combine and other things like that. She she really didn't make the cut. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of athletes didn't return to her the, that that worked with her before. And the I mean, ones that knew done, you, right? The ones that knew me, right? Um, and was there was there a, was there a, like a direct other than your social media? Were there any other consequences for you? Um, I lost partnerships. I lost contracts. They were just like, "Hey, Lex, you know, I understand that you know this is not something that you would do, but because this is out there, we right. also want to. We don't know you, know you, and we don't know her, her. So we want to make sure that if um, we just want to make sure that we save the company. And I was just like, oh, okay, I get it. I was like, no, I get it. They were just like, you know, nothing personal. And I said, I get it. You know what I mean? And it was something that it was going to help me, you know, in tremendous ways. Not only that, with money. We needed the money during COVID, right? Because I was also working for a not-for-profit organization and they let me go. Um, and that was, that was also another, you know, stream of income aside of working with my athletes. That stopped. You know what I mean? I was just getting paid directly with them. And I was just like, damn, you know, how am I going to survive now? Thank goodness for the rainy funds. But did she stop money from coming in? Absolutely around that time. And a lot of people wow. were that knew me were angry. They were just like, you need to expose her. You need to do this. See, one thing about me is that I learned to, to stand still. I, I learned to be in a still place. I'm one that I cannot react in the, at that, in the moment. I need to take a step mm -hmm. back really listen really pay attention because if i would have reacted how she wanted me to mm -hmm. that would also affect my reputation you see she yes. responded this way she responded how she wanted to get you know to respond she um and the, it, it, and being still made me you know redirect and realign a lot of the things that i was doing even my approach even the connections that i had you know what i mean the plan that i want and how i wanted to get there and I, you know, and I thank God, you know what I mean, that I have a very good circle of, of friends, a very good circle of athletes that still are with me till today and still working with me. Um, right. And it's because of my character, right? And because of who I am. They were just like, man, if that was me, I would have done this. I would have done that. They were just like, you are I would amazing. Have uh, right. Anybody would have responded that way. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And it was just like, I had to be still, right? And and it's just like, I'm big on my karma. You know what I mean? You know, things are just right. going to bite you in the butt at the end of the day, regardless, no matter how much damage you do to a person. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's, it's going to come right back to you. And people are going to start looking at you like, dang, like, this is what she does to people. You know, mm -hmm. people pay attention to that. And mm -hmm. um, she... Yeah. She actually, what she did was that she set me up for a blessing, you know, because today I'm very, very, very happy at where things are going now. You know what I mean? I have people that nice. support me. I have people that are working with me. I have a, one of, I have one of the best coaches in the Northeast that I partnered up with that gave me the, the access to work with him as the first woman of color um, strength and conditioning coach for the NFL combine prep in the Northeast. Um, as a matter of fact, in the nation, because I have yet to hear from a woman, you know, a woman of color that's in the in the NFL combined prep as a you know black Latina strength and conditioning coach. And if she's she's out there, I want to see her. Right, I really want to connect with her. That would be an honor. But it gave me the um, these people gave me the access to their platform, to their space, and then from there it just went, you know going um that now it's leading up to the plans that i'm opening up yeah. um I, mm -hmm. there's not a day right. for my complex my sports complex to train my athletes and the people that are training with me 
And, you know, I have an investor that believes in my dream. I have a business partner that believes in my dream. And they're just like, we're going to make this possible. That's it's just that sponsorships. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is. It's like, you know, you're judged by your character. And I've always Mm -hmm. agreed with that whole thing of like when, you know, someone attacks you or you know what, just let let the universe, let God handle them. It's not your responsibility to inflict any type of retaliation. It, I'm not there yet, live, but one day. <laughs> they have to live with they have to live with that. But Lex, oh, yeah. I want I want to get more into and I'd warned you <laughs> into your personal life. Yes. Um <laughs> but um like before I go I go there, so I'll give you a little buffer. But you know, I see you come and train with us um, two days a week. But before you train with us, you're in a high school doing track. And then right after you're with someone else. And then we can't meet on Thursday because you're flying out. And like, so I don't understand how you work. Like that to me is like, wow, this girl is like all over the place, but just seems so organized. And you're, you're a mom of two boys as well. Yes. So can you like explain, you know, cause this is how you generate your income. This is your livelihood, yes. right? This is my so livelihood. I was actually speaking to my niece last night and to my stepdaughter and I was telling them about you. And I was like, you guys can accomplish anything. This girl is on a plane every week. She then comes trains with us. And then she's like, and she's just like on the train with her backpack and you could, and it's like real badass, you know? So, um, can you it like, is. can you break that down? Like explain right. that for like the, the conventional Absolutely. worker like us. <laughs> I learned, um, time management. I prioritize the things that mean the most to me first, and then everything else takes, you know, uh, takes place after that. And if it's something that I, I desire, I go for it. And I make room and time for it. I, I worked so hard to, it's like I was telling a friend the other day, I worked so hard to create the flexibility in my schedule because this is what I wanted. And it started from, I was living in a, ba- in a gym basement for two years with my kids. This dream began on 16 cents. I call it my 16 cents purpose, right? I was on this 16 cents. Yep. 16 cents. This was my 16 cents purpose. You know what I mean? It began from, you know, being evicted from a home, divorce, right? It began from like, you know, rejection from my family. This was my drive. And I was just like, how am I going to do it with 16 cents to my name, in my bank account, in my wallet, in my hands to a Metro card that didn't even have sufficient funds, right? Where am I going to go? How am I going to do this? And I'm sitting down, you know what I mean? And and my manager was like, so there's a space downstairs. Do you want it? I was just like, I'll take it. He was just like, this is, but this is the catch. You cannot leave after 10 PM because alarms are going to go off and you cannot come out before 5 AM because then the alarms are going to go off. Wow. And I was like, I got you. I got it. This is where I'm going to live. And this is where I'm going to stay for now. And I thank God that again, that these are people that supported me throughout the time I would train, you know what I mean? My athletes and my clients. And, um, I had coaches with my kids, my son, you know, helping him with his kindergarten homework and the little one playing with Play-Doh and finger coloring, doing all this other stuff. Um, And I was just like, this, this is just phenomenal. This is amazing. And I was just like, how can I continue to succeed um, without the Mm -hmm. pressure of the schedule, without the time? How can I make time for all of this stuff? And that's, and I learned like, you know, to navigate, you know, with that. And I was just like, no, I'm going to learn how to make sacrifices. And all of that was, um, it exposed bravery and courage. I was afraid to make certain steps. I was afraid to travel to certain places because of my kids, because of the lack of support or what I was just afraid. And I learned how to trust people that really cared about me. Right. And that, and I always Mm -hmm. thank God for my best friend and her mother, because my best friend is, I, I call her my sister. She's my, my everything to the, you know, to this day. And her mother is like my mother. I even call her mom. Because they created also a space for me and my boys. So if I had to go to work, they helped me out. If I needed a place to sleep, to wake up at 3 in the morning, to catch a Metro North or to catch a flight or to do something, she was there. If there was emergencies, you know what I mean, to, in my kid's school, she got in an Uber and left. 
she would say, uh uh-uh, I gotta go, an emergency, and her boss would be like, where are you going, mind your business, I'm getting my nephews, you know what I mean, it was, it was like that, and I, I appreciate that so much, because she knew that I had a goal, and it would be the same, and, and, and we do the same for each other, if there's something that she needs, I'm there for her, because we want to support each other's dreams, um, we, we, you know, we, we, we didn't have much, and the more we succeed, we're, you know, we, we appreciate just those gems and those people that were there for us. But it's, again, it's like I, I, I learned how to also say no to the things that never benefited me. I learned how to use my time wisely for the things that will benefit me. I learned how to invest in those that I believe that are going to use the things that I'm applying um, that are going to benefit them as well. So it's more like a um, paying it forward but I'm also receiving from that as well. Um, and I also learned how to say, look, this is my contract. This is my, this is what I'm doing. And if you can't work with that, then that's okay. Then I'll move somewhere. They're like, no, 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 no. We're going to work with you. Okay, great. Send me the contract. Send me the pay in advance. This is what I charge. And boom, this is how we're going to move forward. And I learned uh, um, that that setting basically, again, boundaries and being firm with your business, it's what created more flexibility right? It creates guarantees. It creates that space of like, we respect this person because she's not sloppy. She's not all over the place. I'm very detailed with my contracts. I'm very detailed with, I need to see this in writing. I need to see who's a part of the team who wrote this. I want to go back and reach out to this person. And I want to make sure that it makes sense for me. If it doesn't make sense for me, then I don't want it, right? Okay. So you're going to reimburse me for my flight. Okay. You're going to reimburse me for my trips. As a matter of fact, why don't you send me that in advance so we can save each other the paperwork for reimbursements and that way I can buy this up. Okay, no, we'll just purchase it for you. Thank you. You made my life easier. You know? You know what? That's that's really great advice because when you're firm and you also know your worth, then you don't yeah. accept, you, you accept, you, I'm sorry, I got tongue tied. Um, you don't accept less than what your value is. Absolutely. And that's very important because people will put value on you if you don't. So they, right. they'll tell you, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. I'm going to tell you. And if you don't right. like it, that's right. okay. Somebody else will come, you know, Absolutely. that's a great yeah. approach. That's a great approach. And then, yeah. And then during that time, I would say, well, you know what, since, you know, you can't do this, I can refer somebody else. So, no, 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 no. We want you. We want you. Okay, mm-hmm. so let's make this happen. Let's right. make this work. Just send me everything, and then everything just gets from there. And and that you know, it's just, that creates a level of respect that is totally different for a woman like myself and a woman of color in this realm. It's like she is setting the standard, right? She's right. breaking that stigma of like, oh, these are women that are just irresponsible. They never show up. They're always late, fashionably late, and all this stuff. I'm like, no, no, no. I will be there front row and center, I'm going to stand up and stand out. And when I arrive to certain places, I immediately stick out like a sore thumb because they're like, oh, there she goes. That little dot of color that's moving and coming closer and closer and closer <laughs> towards this location. That's her. There she goes. And immediately as I arrive to a place, and when they hear my accent on, on the phone, they're just like, wait, so where are you from? Uh, and, and they're like, you must be from the Northeast. Yes. Do you mind where I access your background? No, that has nothing to do with work. Let's go. So they, some of them still don't know where I'm from. Um, and do I cold switch? No, I don't. You're going to hear you. all of this. You're going to hear you. all of this. All of this. Yeah. And I will throw off some, mira, oye, what's going on? What's happening? You know, some of them just look at it, you know, and it's just, so for those who haven't been exposed to people like me um, or like us, it's uncomfortable for them. But I am not going to make myself uncomfortable to make you comfortable. Yes. I'm going to continue okay. to be myself in a space, whether you like it or not. This is just who I am. Right. Mm-hmm. That's just mm-hmm. it. And there are times like even when I'm in clinics or like in certain seminars for strength coaches, I'm, you know, I'm a part of the, you know, a group of certain physical therapists that they just go to the seminar and training. I'm not a doctor in physical therapy, but I like being around them because I learn. I like to challenge myself. I'm constantly learning. And sometimes it just comes out like, yes. And they're just all looking, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, that's just who I am. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, sorry, sorry. No, yes, go ahead. Yes, yes, queen. I got this right, yes. you know? And then they look at me and then and then they start laughing. And then they just, I, it breaks the ice because I, I can't right. be in a space where it's just like, you know, 
we're going to perform like this, be, and we're going to talk right. about this. Where you can't be yourself. Refuse, right, mm -hmm. and I refuse that. Before, yeah. I was like that. But now, because I'm no. so comfortable in my own skin and with who I am and with what I know, I refuse to allow anybody else to make me feel uncomfortable or intimidated. Mm -hmm. So then that Good way for I can you. back away. Good for you. So. Zuli, did you have a question? Because otherwise no, no, I'm going to no. jump in. <laughs> well, no, I was just going to say, you know, it's good to be comfortable with who you are and be yourself because I feel like you perform better that way. You don't have to hold yeah. back, you know, like at work, I do yeah. post switch to certain people um, because it is more corporate and they do expect you to be a certain way. But right. with the people that I work with on an everyday basis and the people that have gotten to know me through the years, I don't, you're, you, you, they have seen the crazy side of me and they know, <laughs> and you know, and I, I have yeah. that understanding with my boss, but, um, but that's amazing. And I think with, you know, what you do and what you're bringing to the line of work that you do, I think that that's great. Thank you. It's admirable. I was, you know, like speaking to my niece last night and describing you and you know yeah. i don't think we actually say how much we admire you like i every time oh, you leave I, I i it 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 hurts physically <laughs> but we hate uh, you I, just a little bit yeah little. but but i do like i do look forward to you know what you yeah. bring your energy and all of that um now i know you have like plans of like you know, building your empire. But before yes. we get there and we don't have too much time, I want to touch on the personal. Of so course. Missy, Missy. So you look like you're 22. Ah. <laughs> and But you have, and you talk about your two kings. So you have yes. a, a teenage boy and then a younger boy, right? I do. I have a 10 year old and a 13 year old, soon to be 14 year old. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. So you, you're, you're, you're a, you're a, uh, a boy mom. Um, I am a boy mom. <laughs> so, yes. um, I, I'm sure you're setting an amazing example for them. Uh, so how's the dating life? Well, are you single? <laughs> are you ready to flamingo? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. That dating life. You know what? This is, this is crazy. I feel like there's pee in the dating pool. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. I'm over it. I'm so over it. I'm so over it. I mean, I am single. You know what I mean? I am single on purpose, right? I'm single on purpose and I'm single by choice. Right. You know, uh, dating is, for me, when I date, I date with intention and I want to date with purpose. And I want to make sure that that person also respects my line of work. I also want them to respect that I come with a package. I have two kids, right? I mean, right. I'm approaching 37 and at the end of the day, I'm not going to stand by, I'm not going to waste my time with nobody that does not want to either also build with me. Um, right. so those are the things that I, that I, um, that I look for when it comes to that. And, and a person that has purpose, a person that has his own thing going on, a person that is healed, a person that has his own identity that does not have to identify with what I do or not, and yeah. I don't want to identify with his, what he does. We're both two separate entities, but at the end of the day, we can come together and build and we can become a power unit, right? These yes. are the things that I look for. A person that is family oriented, but a person that's also faith driven. Doesn't have to be a Christian or whatever, but somebody that believes in a higher up that is spiritual. Somebody, because if you do that, then that just, um, that means that you're grateful. There's gratitude there, right? Um, with whatever it is that you believe in. Um, right. But, you and, know, when you're speaking about, you know, a person that has their own thing, as a woman that has her own thing, is that intimidating for men? Because, like, first of all, okay, two part question Do you mm -hmm. date athletes? Number two, if you don't date athletes, how does a regular, schmegular, degular guy handle that you're around these big, sometimes handsome, very wealthy yeah. young men? That There was a guy um, a few months back that I had a conversation with and he was just like, um, I don't know what you do with these athletes. And I said, well, then, I don't, then me and you can no longer have a conversation. I said, because you don't trust me and you don't trust the work that I do with them. He was like, no, 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 it's not that. And I said, no, 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 no. It is that. It is that. And sometimes I just tell them, no, I'm just a strength and conditioning coach. And when they get to know me more, then I begin to lay out what exactly I do and who I work with. 
um, mm -hmm. because that has become, they've become intimidated with my work and they don't trust a woman like myself around men like these. Mm -hmm, um, right. And do I date athletes? No. Why not? Damn, because women just go to like All Star Weekends. Just, just to and find you have, somebody, and you have access to them, and you're not, you know, exploiting that. No, <laughs> I don't mix. I don't. <laughs> I don't mix uh, business with pleasure. Girl, what can you refer though? <laughs> I will not refer. I will not. <laughs> My Maddie's on a mission, of course, as always, right. because we got we got something. No, no, I got friends and they hotties you know like there ain't nothing wrong with getting yourself I like you know, know. a I nice them, wealthy athlete i let them be their own cupid i don't like to you know play map you know matchmaker because they're gonna be like oh because of you this happened i right. let i let people you know go <laughs> you know do their own thing but no have have some of them approached me after they were done working with me and it's just like so lex i no <laughs> but why it's not <laughs> no, yeah, it's a big no. And then it's because what happens is that if even let's say, for example, if I date an athlete, what's going to happen is that people are going to be afraid to work with me. Right. And I don't want that. Like I'm very big. It took me 19 years to build this. I refuse for anybody or anything to interrupt that. Now, mm -hmm. let's say, for example, if there is something. If there is something <laughs> that pops up, if mm -hmm. that happens then maybe, you know what I mean? But it would have to be somebody that I am no longer working with or somebody that I do not work with and they're somewhere further away. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want them within the circle of how I met him close to me or working with me because I, it's just going to be like, okay, so she met this person this way and they broke up and she's going to meet the next person like this, right? I think I really think about things like that and that's, that's my biggest fear. No matter how attractive they are or how great they are or how much money they make, um, because at the end of the day, they can lose all of that, right? An, ath an, an athlete can get injured and they can lose everything. Now you're stuck for, you know, in square one and you're like, so what are we going to do now? So dating a person that's regular schmegler or whatever it is that they're doing, I, like, I'm, I'm attracted to a person that has purpose. I like people who are, you know, are passionate about what they do. I like a person that is consistent. Consistency is everything to me a person that communicates with understanding right because we can communicate we can talk but this is a person be it re receiving what you're saying am i understanding who you are as a person am mm -hmm. i supporting your needs am i really listening mm -hmm. so that that plays a, a huge role um for me you know what i mean i want them to really listen and pay attention to what i'm doing the same yeah. thing that I will do for them. I'm one that I would pick up and drop the things and I would go and support my man if I had one. Yeah. Um, yeah. In those things. Right. But yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, no. Are... I mean, I mean that, and those are valid things too. Like, mm -hmm. I think that that should, that should just be automatic. Like, you know, when you meet someone, it's, it's sad that these are like the things that we have to kind of, you know, say yeah. we want, because that should just, that, that, that's the foundation for a healthy relationship. So right. we're almost out of time. I don't want to end without you briefly telling us about, you know, your future project like what is it that you know coach lex what's the next yeah. step for coach lex so the next steps is that i i will be opening up my sports complex my performance facility you know i, I have an investor and a business partner and she is a doctor right and she believes heavily in the things that I do, and I believe in the things that, she, you know, she does. She's also the doctor for a lot of, you know, the athletes that, you know, we work with. Her fiancé is my athlete chef, so, we, you know, we're keeping it, you know, as a within there. So my sports complex, well, our um, sports complex, as I as I have to say, it's, it's going to have a kitchen. We're going to have the nutrition, the chef. You know, we're going to have immediate attention to the athletes, you know, from the doctor that I will have there. And then I, it, it's going to be very private, um, you know, and it's going to open up. It's going to open up around 2022, early 2022. So that's something to definitely be expecting. And it's going to be in New Jersey. So 
Nice. You guys, you guys, I know. Awesome. Just, yeah, Monty's like, so you're going to be in New Jersey and then your husband's going to be in New Jersey and then you're just going to have to move to New Jersey. That's just it. That's just yeah. what New Jersey is New Jersey. But I also have plans to like branch out. Uh, my dream is to also open out one in Maryland, um, you know, to be in collaborations with a lot of the HBCUs that are out there. And, you know, we have a lot of athletes of color that come from the University of Maryland. Um Will I have my dream house in Maryland? Yes, because I just am obsessed with Maryland. I'm so so. Did I Beautiful. disappoint you, Money? For a second? I don't know. I'm just not going to say anything. You said it's your dream home, all right? But it's Fine. yeah. It's, it, it, Maryland it's, is beautiful. Maryland is yeah. absolutely beautiful, and they have the and I keep thinking about the access of schools for my kids. Um, I do my dream. I, you know, I will support them with their dreams, but my dream is so they can attend an HBCU. Um, that's that's my dream for them yeah. um but yeah. yeah that that's what's going on now girl We're gonna be, you're gonna do it street. yeah it's gonna I'm happen that now. yeah and then i'm also working with you know olympic track athletes like you know girls of color track athletes that you know train them for the olympics you know i'm at the and then I'm also uh, collaborated with, you know, d Academy, Coach Brian, which we're going to be doing an NFL retreat, a pre-camp, you know, in June. So we're going to be working with those athletes there. And it's just like what we're doing is just, it's, it's amazing. So those are the things that we're currently doing right now. And then further down the line, I'm going to be doing an all-women's retreat, um, wellness retreat for the, for the fall. So definitely. Yes, we're in. We're not, we're in. We're not athletes, yeah. but we'll 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 do what we can. No, it's definitely open <laughs> for all women. So it's gonna be, you know, food, wellness, different workshops, certain clinics. Awesome. And it's just gonna be a nice go away weekend in a, at a cabin and women are just gonna connect with each other. I love Ooh, that. I think I like that's that. amazing. So wait, yeah. I have a quick question. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be a mom if I didn't throw in my son in there somehow. So my son is actually going to go to college for exercise science. So yeah. maybe he can do a little internship with you guys when the time comes. Absolutely. One of the things that I do is that I do reach out to collegiate institutions that have exercise science programs. Um, a lot of them do know me and they do know the work that I do and they verified my qualifications and I do awesome. um, pull in interns. So they pull in, I pull in interns because they have to do it between 300 to 500 clinical hours in order to right. complete their degree in exercise science. And sometimes I also work with, you know, students that are final, you know, doing that and also as their master's or those who are um, interested in obtaining their CSCS um, certification, their strength and conditioning coach. Um, certification right. so that way they come and they, they're able to apply. I believe big, I'm, I'm a big believer on application. We can read certain <laughs> certain things until we blew in the face, but application is a must in this field. So you're coming in, you're creating programs, you're working hands on with the athletes, we're asking questions and we're developing from there. Like you're able to take, you know, what's in the books to like real life and say, now this makes awesome. sense. Awesome. Awesome. I think you're superwoman, by the way, but I, I think you really are her. Like, <laughs> so, but, but I think you have amazing things coming up for you and, and I see it happening, girl. So do it, do it. Thank you so much. Uh-oh, did Maddie freeze? Maddie, Maddie. Freeze. she's on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, great. <laughs> Cause I would have been talking over you. <laughs> um, no, you are, you are a phenomenal woman and, you know, we're going to be here to support you all the way. Yes. Um, yes. if any of our listeners want to reach you, can they, um, connect with you Absolutely. through Instagram? They can, okay. Yes, they can definitely connect with me on Instagram. Um, it's, you know, coach underscore Lex underscore on Instagram. And then I also infuse like in the message Part. There's also my email, so they can also reach out to me via email. Lately, I I need to get better at responding to my DMs because I've been I, there's just been a flow of a lot of them coming in, and sometimes it can get overwhelming. So if they send me an email, I can definitely respond to that as well. My number is not on there, but my email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and her number is uh, no. <laughs> um, anyways. Thank you so much for taking the time out to sit with us. Um, this Thank was a great conversation. And yeah. I guess we're going to see you sometime next week so you can kick our yes. ass like you always no. do. Oh. <laughs> anyways, um, thank you, guys. <laughs> yes, summer bodies. Yeah. Um, anyways, guys. 
<laughs> Listen, this is the body you're going to get. <laughs> yes. So, um, anyways, guys, thank you for listening. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode of El Salon Chronicles. You guys know that you can um, – uh, listen to our podcast across all platforms, iHeart, Spotify, Pandora, iTunes, um, you name it, we're on it. Uh, we're also on YouTube. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. If you'd like to sustain, if you'd like to help the sustainability of El Salon, we accept anything. You can, we, we barter. Listen, uh, <laughs> so, you know, we have, you know, um, everything is on our website. You can yes. support us by buying our merch um, mm -hmm. or you can go on Patreon or, you know, you can go to Zuli's OnlyFans and you can see her feet. <laughs> <laughs> Defin definitely not the feet. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Ladies of El Salon, the Chronicles. Oh yeah, ladies of El Salon, the Chronicles. Escucha.